Roald Dahl's Fantastic Mr. Fox, illustrated by Quentin Blake, chapter 8, The Foxes Begin to Starve. So when we last left our fox family in chapter 7, we'll never let him go. We had Boggis, Bunce, and Bean deciding that they were going to starve the fox out of his hole. So what they were planning to do was to camp there day and night watching the hole until they got so hungry, until Mr. Fox got so hungry, he would have to come out. So Boggis, Bunce, and Bean ordered down to their farms for tents sleeping bags, and supper. Chapter 8, The Foxes Begin to Starve. That evening, three tents were put up in the crater on the hill. One for Boggus, one for Bunts, and one for Bean. The tents surrounded Mr. Fox's hole. And the three farmers sat outside their tents, eating their supper. Boggus had three boiled chickens smothered in dumplings. Bunce had six donuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste. And Bean had two gallons of cider. All three of them kept their guns beside them. Boggus picked up a steaming chicken and held it close to the fox's hole. Can you smell this, Mr. Fox? he shouted. Lovely, tender chicken. Why don't you come up and get it? The rich scent of chicken wafted down the tunnel to where the foxes were crouching. Oh, Dad, said one of the small foxes. Couldn't we just sneak up and snatch it out of his hand? Don't you dare, said Mrs. Fox. That's just what they want you to do. But we're so hungry, they cried. How long will it be till we get something to eat? Their mother didn't answer them, nor did their father. There was no answer to give. As darkness fell, Bunce and Bean switched on the powerful headlamps of the two tractors and shone them on to the hole. Now, said Bean, we'll take it in turn to keep watch. One watches while two sleep, and so on all through the night. Boggus said, What if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes out on the other side? You didn't think of that one, did you? Of course I did, said Bean, pretending he had. Go on, then. Tell us the answer, said Boggus. Bean picked something small and black out of his ear and flicked it away. How many men have you got working on your farm? he asked. Thirty-five, Boggus said. I've got thirty-six, Bunce said. And I've got thirty-seven, Bean said. That makes one hundred and eight men all together. We must order them to surround the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashlight. There will be no escape then for Mr. Fox. So the order went down to the farms, and that night one hundred and eight men formed a tight ring around the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and guns and hatchets and pistols and all sorts of other horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for a fox or indeed for any other animal to escape from the hill. The next day, the watching and waiting went on. Boggus and Bunce and Bean sat upon small stools staring at the fox's hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat there with their guns on their laps. Every so often, 
Mr. Fox would creep a little closer towards the mouth of the tunnel and take a sniff. Then he would creep back again and say, They're still there. Are you quite sure? Mrs. Fox would ask. Positive, said Mr. Fox. I can smell that man Bean a mile away. He stinks. Stay tuned for Chapter 9. Mr. Fox has a plan. Thank you.